So what's happening, Lou? Not much, man. This is uh, welcome to another Sunday night. Another Sunday night. We got some stuff to talk about tonight. We do a yeah. bunch of stuff, yes, right? We do. We always yep. do. Yep, yep. Um, we were talking about maybe talking about some debut albums that we like, or yes, some albums, notable you know, debut albums. Yep, notable debut albums. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Mine are at the end of my my list of extensive notes here. Yeah. Uh, anybody want to kick off this category? Notable or memorable debut albums? I I nominate Mark Smith. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now my don't my note my notable debut albums. My notable debut albums are <laughs> ones I personally like. But if there's a couple that I'm not crazy about, but I'll just say they were big at debut albums. So I'm going to go with my first. Will be. Sorry, guys, Zebra. I think it's their best album, and it is a notable debut album. We actually reviewed yes, that album is. a couple of weeks ago, didn't didn't we? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yep. And I got it's a good record. It's a really good record. Yep. Yep. It's a fine. So it st- stands the test of time. Okay. So who's, who's next? Up? Lou, you're up. I got one. Um, Another record that we reviewed recently last week, and it's the debut album by the Dream Academy. Yeah. I think it took us all by surprise. Yes. Yeah. So, Great record. Absolutely did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Much to our edification and delight. You know, because I was expecting something like, oh, okay, great Hicks single, some nice stuff, but no, pretty good stuff. So, two good albums in a row. Yeah. Uh, I think a great debut album is The Go Go's Beauty in the Beat. Mm. It's a great debut album. A lot of hit singles on there. It's a fun record. And I it's think Jack Calabrese would agree with me. <laughs> I don't know about Scott McClain, but Jack agrees. Do you, do you know the year that came out? Early 80s. 81, but... possibly. 81, something 83, like that. 81. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Peak yeah. MTV time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Wow, guys. I was still in uh, elementary school when that came out. I was in Zion Lutheran School. Sorry, just had to do it in Westwood, New Jersey. <laughs> Westwood, New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, we've, we've all lived. On that. Mark, did you ever live in Westwood? Yes, I yeah. lived in Westwood that's for right, years. Next that, door yeah. to where yeah. I lived. Yeah. That's how I met that's, Perry. That's right. That, yeah. That's how you. That's how you guys met. Yep. Yeah. I was the weird. Neighbor. I spent. Okay. Yeah, locals used to call it Wastewood. Wastewood. <laughs> when I was in when I was in high school, we took the Don Bosco bus. We used to dread driving through Westwood. Because the hooligans would bombard us with ice balls <laughs> going down wherever the Baskin Robbins was there. So one day we armed ourselves. So we got we fought back. It, it was like it was like a, a old old war movie. So we had boxes of ice balls that were ready to go. So when we went by Westwood, that area, that we bombarded them back, and they were not expected. It was a, it was a surprise retaliation attack by the underdog. Yeah, well, you know, private high school, so <laughs> you know, who knows? Wastewood. <laughs> yeah, I was told yep. never to ride my bike through that town, but I did, oh. and I was fine. <laughs> All right. Now, I think, uh, who's up, man? How about right. Black Sabbath's debut album, 1970? <laughs> that is a great debut album. Can't know off my list, is, Perry. Is it, is, is, it called, is it called Black Sabbath? I think it's just called Black Sabbath. Mark, yes. can you verify okay. that? Yes, it's Black Sabbath. It's just called it's Black Sabbath. Pretty creepy cover, too. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yep. Yep. They, yep. Pretty scary I, cover, but I still think about 1969. There was a lot of weird music out. All right, we had, but I don't just imagine hearing that opening song, "Black Sabbath" in 1969. Mm-hmm. You, what the hell? You know, that was yeah. the same year had Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. <laughs> you know, so you had you know that that, right? Yep. Uh, who's up? Me? Yeah, I got one. Oh, Lou. Uh, is, what is it? Yeah, yeah, I think you. we skipped. Yeah, you. Okay. Yeah. Um, REM's debut album, Murmur. Ooh, yeah. Alternative indie rock classic. I wonder. I wonder how that ranks in indie. You look it up, but indie yeah. rock, alternative rock debut albums. You know, because there's classic rock, and you know, I looked up some debut albums of all time, and there's a whole bunch of stuff in there from from the modern modern day too. But anyway, so don't know. So they, on a personal level, REM's first record was was a beauty. It's a beauty. Absolutely, it's a gem. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a gem. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I would go so fast. I can't think of anything I, I can criticize about it that is not petty. So it's almost a perfect, maybe a perfect record. It, it just seems like one uh, of those records where you can just put drop the needle and just let it go, 
and every yeah. song yeah. Mo- is moving. Yeah. And, and I think yeah. even songs that you might not, you know, you always like some things more than others. The ones that you may not like as much, there's something great about them or just interesting. Yeah. It's an Very emotional record, record, too. It's an emotional record, I think. Right. Yeah. And we're going to circle back to R.M.'s Murmur in a little bit, too. Okay. Right. For other reasons. Yeah. All How about you, you uh, Marky Mark? I'm going to go with Marky Mark and the Funk Punch. No, actually, I'm going to go with Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> no, I'm record. just joking. I'm just joking. I'm going to go with <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne's debut album because it was monumental in that the guy was washed up and he should have been dead by that point. And he came out with such a definitive yeah. statement. That album is still today, to this day, those songs are known by so many people. Is that the Blizzard of Oz? Yes. So it has Crazy Train, Mr. Crowley, yeah. I Don't Know. Uh, I like that in the second one. Good. Does it have Goodbye to Romance on it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, it's, now, the original is one of the shittiest sound of recordings of all time. I know. I know. <laughs> but <laughs> but it was recorded onto a Walkman, wasn't it? No. It, uh, you know, it's it, funny. If you listen to it, everything about it sucks except Randy's guitars. And what they did was they had all his cabinets down in the basement. And they lowered a mic down. And he was playing up in the control room. because He was just blasting. So mm-hmm. the guitars sound great. And he double tracked everything. So even those intricate solos, double, he would play over them. Like, you know, it's just amazing that, that he could do that. Like this fast picking and just do it twice, you know? Uh, but yeah, you're always the drums sound bad on that album. They really do. Yeah. Um, do you know, is that, is that the reason why they re recorded certain parts with Robert Trujillo from Metallica? No. And uh, that was a, they, uh, okay. that was a business decision by his manager, Sharon. Because the original album, uh, everything was split four ways. So Randy's gone. So Randy died. Right. So she decided to re-record the album and release it, the first two albums, so she wouldn't have to play pay Lee Kerslake and Bob Daisley uh, royalties. Or, yeah. Wow. And um, Lee Kerslake, in the year, final year of his life, was begging Sharon and Ozzy, give me a gold record. I'm not looking for money now. I just want to be remembered for what i did right they they coughed up the gold record and sh- they got shamed okay. into uh putting the original release back out there it just didn't sound right i think we talked about that a couple of weeks ago on the yeah. uh, on the show yeah. right yeah yeah i've got one it's one of the greatest the records ever made ever one ever great way, not only a debut album but one of the greatest records yep. ever made yep okay oh my god who the hell Cash. It sounds it's like Mace. Setting yourself up. It's Big Star, number one record. It is one of the greatest. They these guys created indie rock. Big Star. The album's you called Number One it. Record. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's fabulous. I'm going to choose it. In fact, in a the next time around when it comes to a, okay. for Definitely me to select influence. the record. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The biggest influence on was replacements for Paul Westerberg. Oh right. man, he wrote, he wrote the that's song nothing Alex compared to like Cheap Trick and everyone else who was influenced yeah, this, by uh, the '70s the show. Yeah. Yep. wasn't the '70s show theme from that album, or yeah. it was recorded yeah. by Cheap, Cheap Trick? Trick? Yeah, Cheap Trick does that. Uh, that's a song by uh, that Alex Chilton wrote. Yep. Hmm. What's going down, man? Who's up? Lou. 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 Um, this is one of, one of my most revered bands of all time, and. When I understand, Mark, you were told not to mention this one. <laughs> <laughs> it is the band music from Big Pink, their debut album, 1968. 1968. 1968. I it's thought you were going to mention another Big band. Pink, right? A, a, a Blue Oyster Cult? Of course I'm going <laughs> to. No, don't. No, don't. It's a good album. It's well, worth mentioning. Oh, my it's God. A, it is who a, the hell cares? I care. I care. care. I care. <laughs> Lewis Circle's debut album is a great and acclaimed debut we album. We reviewed it here. Yeah, where... we reviewed it. Yeah. That's right, we did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we so, reviewed music, Zebra, music, too. <laughs> music from Big Pink. Yeah, it, it was a critical darling. Yeah. Um, it, it came out at, at a time when that, that record wasn't expected. You know, it wasn't a huge seller, but it was respectable. I thought you were but talking about people... Big Pink. I am. I am. Oh. I am Big Pink. It came out in 1968. Yes. At the time, it was, it was almost controversial because it was the departure from all the heyday of the rock festival type music. So what kind of songs are on music from Big Pink? It's a mixture. It's country soul. 
But it, it's been encapsulated in what this, is it? This Cripple Creek? Stall. Cripple Creek is on there? No, no. It's got um, uh, Tears of Rage, the Bob Dylan and uh, mm-hmm. Richard Manuel composition. Uh, it's got the weight. The classic is the weight. The weight, the yeah. Robert Robertson pen, yeah. Ooh, uh, that's a big Helm song. Yeah, yeah. That is the big song about the impossibility of sainthood. Uh, we can talk. One, of the, they did a lot of call and response vocals. Um, mm-hmm. Richard Manuel sang the majority of the songs on it. Uh, Levi was late to the fold at that point. He just rejoined the band before they made that record. Um, Rick Danko has a couple great songs on it. Uh, this wheel's on fire. He co-wrote with Bob Dylan. This wheel, and also um, Rick Danko sang. I don't know who did the original, but um, Long Black Veil. Vale. Mm-hmm. He did a cover of that. Yep. And there's the they call it the Rock Festival, the, the early '70s Rock Festival classic. Uh, I shall be released. Yeah. Bob Dylan yeah. song. Um, what else is on there? Chess Fever. With that rock, rock, yeah, yeah, with that loud organ, yeah, yep. By what I think is rock and roll's greatest keyboardist, uh, Garth Hudson, and yeah, so it's it's a very it's an eclectic album. It's kind of country. There's you know there's, there's rock in there too. Um, Robbie Robertson sings one of his few lead vocals on a song called "The Kingdom Come," "The Kingdom Come," which is the second song on the record. Um, and Mark, yeah, we go. Well, but Mr. Smith yeah, went away. Uh, right, it's not their best record. But it is as a debut record. It got a lot of attention. I think that was the record that made Eric Clapton want to quit Cream and ask him to join. Well, or it's it, funny you say it, that. It that whole. Yeah. My choice was going to be Fresh Cream, 1966, their debut album. Yeah. 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 It's funny. You know, as new as Cream were, by the time they were getting started, he wanted out anyway. Eric Clapton just, you know, saw yeah, a different they way. They were there in 66, 67, 68. They were done. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Three 68, years. They, they were done. Yeah. Yeah. Big impact, though. How about but, uh, the uh, the Pretenders first album? Yeah, that's a notable yeah. debut album. It, it, it really yeah. is. It really is. And, yep. and the, the timing was good on that too. You know that, that I call that post disco, early punk stuff. Where you know it's like rock had some revitalization. You know, the late seventies. Yeah. Stuff. Even you know Fleetwood Mac. You know the, the Rumors album seventy seven. It it's California soft rock, and it's great. But there was something else that there was no edge to it, even really to think about it. It's, well, it's very West Coast. But, but you know, the pretenders were their kind of English, kind of American. Oh, yeah, yeah. But Rumors was like their 13th album. Fleet Overall, Rumors. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was the first with Stevie and, and Lindsay, correct? No. There was an album called, uh, that, the album prior right. to that, where uh, uh, Mick Fleetwood has the dangling balls and Stevie Nicks is on the cover with them. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's got um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Monday morning, you sure? Look, that's on the record. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. That was prior to rumors. Yep. How, How about, about Smithereens? How about Smithereens' first record? Yeah. W- wow. That's been been a long time since I've even heard that. What is what's yeah. on the Smithereens' debut album? Do you know? Uh, behind we, the, we, we no, both had got, the um, records, man. They were yeah, we both yeah, did. It, it, yeah. It's got um. The, well, the big song was uh, "Blood and Roses," their first big single. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, yep. Blood it, it, and it, roses. Yeah. Yep. Uh, for those, for those, uh, the Smithereens, if you you might know them from their later hits, they were a New Jersey based band from Central Central Jersey, I guess. Yeah. Yep. M- m- middle Jersey. Um. But uh, yeah, they had some national hits. That's you know. Yeah. Led by the late great Pat Denizio. Yeah, yep. Um, cigarette, cigarette, watch the smoke line. I'm I'm a fan of the Clash's debut album. Well, I'm a fan of the Clash, but their yeah. debut album was uh was a good one too. And the cars, the cars, the cars. Yeah. Cars. Uh, yeah, yeah. Roy Thomas Baker's drum production aside, that that was a big record. That yeah. had a lot of big hits though. That first re- Cars record, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And of course, you know, Elliot Easton is the guy. How about yeah. Led Zeppelin's first record? Was that a success when it first came out? Was that, I think it was, I it was know, critically. Well, the critics never liked, you know, any of them. So they, they never, they never. Yeah. In, in retrospect, they do. Right. But that, that was definitely that was an impact. That definitely came out. Even some of the other, other there's always one hit wonder records too, like Iron Butterfly. You know, around that same time, yeah, in, in yeah. Out of the Vita. Uh, television, Marquee Moon. That's one of my favorite records. That's their debut album. Yep. 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 One of the biggest in the pre-punk days was Patti Smith's Horses. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I don't know where Mark is. A lot of these are considered classic records, too. 
Yeah, yeah, like, I don't care about the critics, whether the critics liked Led Zeppelin or Black Sabbath. The critics hated Black Sabbath, you know, but uh, yeah. I had the record. <laughs> they hated Van Halen, too, I think. Yeah, yep. What about, uh you have any more uh debut albums? Uh, notable That's kind of it for me. Mem- yeah. yeah, same with me. Uh, no. Mark, yeah. Mark's temporarily away, so. Uh, so uh, it must be Sunday night. It must be Sunday night, yeah. When it's Sunday night, there is internet problem. Yeah. Do you know who was nominated for the rock and roll? No, who, you know, who was, who's good?